Well, happy Thursday, everybody. Uh, today for our devotion, we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And as you're opening your Bible, just want to remind you that this Sunday evening at First Baptist Church, we have an event called One Night. This will be the third year in a row we've had it. Uh, many churches in this region coming together. And so we will have over 1,000 teenagers in the worship center Sunday evening. They'll hear a gospel message. We will see teenagers accept Jesus and become followers of his. We will see teenagers who are believers recommit themselves and renew their walk with Jesus. We will see teenagers God is calling to be preachers and pastors and missionaries and so on. They will answer a call to ministry. So all of that, this and that. Please, I covet your prayers. I'm asking you, will you stop for a moment right now and pray for God to do a great work in, in the lives of these teenagers that will be here this Sunday night? Listen, God will always have a people. And I know sometimes uh, people give up on the next generation. God hasn't. I haven't. You don't either. God has great young people who love him and, and, and he's going to turn some lives around this Sunday night. So you be praying for these teenagers and for the speaker and for the musicians, for everybody involved, for just a, a great work of God at one night this Sunday evening. All right. In chapter three, um, and you know, <laughs> I've said before, Paul's some some of his letters are more challenging to interpret than others, and and it's it's not that it's impossible. It's just that Paul is really brilliant. I mean, he really he really is. Paul was educated. And he was smart, and his arguments sometimes run on, and there's a there's a loop to them, and so you really you really have to almost like diagram a sentence to track it. But once you do. Great teaching, and and he starts this chapter out, chapter three. By uh, and, and remember back in chapter one, we talked about the mutuality that he had with them and them with him and that we as believers are mutually dependent on one another and impact one another. Here he says, hey, guys, I don't need a, re a letter of recommendation from you all. Like, you know, some others, you know, like today, people always want to get letters of recommendation. Paul says, I don't need that. You are my letter of recommendation. I started that church. Many of you are saved because of my ministry. You are my letter of recommendation. And that's all I need. And then he goes on to talk about how um, God, God's work to save people through Jesus Christ is, is a glorious thing. And in fact, there is more glory with God saving people through Jesus than there was glory when God gave the Old Testament law to Moses at Mount Sinai because Moses went up on the mountain and spent those 40 days with God and God carved the Ten Commandments on stone with his fingers. And when Moses came off that mountain, his face was brilliantly shining with the glory of God. And it was so bright that he wore a veil over his face. That's the glory of God present on Mount Sinai. Paul says, when Jesus saves somebody, there's more glory in that. There's more glory in Jesus saving someone than there was in the giving of the law at Sinai to Moses. And then he goes on to say that, that the glory that Moses had on his face at Sinai gradually faded. And he didn't have to wear the veil anymore. But you and me as believers, because we are saved in Jesus and he is in us, we are the walking glory of God. And when you look in a mirror and see yourself, when you really look deep enough and you see the work of God in your life to save you, what Jesus has done in your life and his presence in your life, you are a reflection of the glory of God. And he says that glory is greater than was present with Moses at Sinai. And he says that glory doesn't fade because as long as you walk this planet, you are reflecting the glory of God. Now sit in that for a moment. Think about that for a moment. Think about the implications of that for your life, that you reflect the glory of God. Wow. Wow. And that's why verse 18 is so beautiful, so beautiful. He says, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. He says, you remember the people that were 
the people that looked at Moses when he came down from Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments, the glory of God was such that there was a veil over it so the people couldn't see it all. It was just too, too bright. He, he's saying here, when you look in the mirror and see yourself, you're really seeing the glory of God, but, but, but it's not veiled. It's there. You just have to see it. And he, and he says, we are being transformed you see, when you, when you are in the presence of God, when you are in the presence of the glory of God, you don't stay the same. You change. You are transformed. Into that same image, what image? Jesus, the glory of God that you see in you. From glory to glory, from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. In other words, when you get your attitude right and you look in that mirror and you see Jesus in you, that is the glory of God in you. And the more you see him and his glory in you, the more you change and are transformed and become like him. His glory makes you more like him. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Um. And that's, that's why we say like with, with our D group ministry and so on. Our goal is not Bible study. Nothing wrong with Bible study. It's a good thing. But our goal is not Bible study. Our goal is to engage with the Word of God so that we encounter Jesus. We look in that mirror and we see the glory of Jesus in us. And we change, we become transformed, we become more like him. A disciple, remember the definition, a disciple is someone who's following Jesus, being changed or transformed by Jesus, and then his own mission, his own mission with Jesus. And so we, we say our goal is to meet Jesus and become more like him. You, you can study the Bible and never become like Jesus. But to engage, this, this, the Bible is our tool, not our goal. We worship God, not the Scripture, even though this is God's inerrant, infallible, holy Word. We don't worship this book. We worship Him. And the more we see Jesus and is engaging in His Word that, that the Holy Spirit uses to enable us to do that, but the more we focus on him and see him, the more we become like him. That is discipleship. That is spiritual growth. Head knowledge is not necessarily discipleship. There are too many people walking around calling themselves Christians who can quote verses in the Bible but don't look very much like Jesus. Don't think very much like Jesus. Jesus, because they're not reflecting his glory. Well, hadn't planned to preach, but I guess I did a little bit there. I love verse 18. I love the idea that Jesus is in me. When I look in the mirror, I don't just see myself, but I see him in the glory of God. And the more I focus on that, the more I can become like him and have the power of God through the Holy Spirit to live a Christ-like and Christ-honoring life. And so can you. So let's do it. Hey, God bless you. Thank you for being with me. Remember to pray for one night, and I'll see you tomorrow as we wrap up this week and look at chapter four. God bless you, everybody.